Hey everybody, Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. Uh, first of all, thank you guys for subscribing to yes. our show. We really appreciate we it. We take a lot of time to put this thing together, so you can take a little bit of time and mm -hmm. do something for us. Ah, <laughs> a little logo over there on the right that'll help you out. Yes. Subscribe. Yes. And did you watch part one with Chris Nee? You need to because guess what? Here comes part two. Vampirina, Doc McStuffins creator. Let's Here get we go. Buzz. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to Feel Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. In many of your shows, and especially in Vampirina, you're casting real kids to play the kids. Yes. Which isn't always the case. Yes. Those of us that are adults that can play kids. Yes. Um, what what's the motivation behind wanting a real kid versus an adult? I think you can tell the difference. And so, all right, so let's go back to Doc. So we have no innocence. Yeah, exactly. Is I, can, what it I is? can hear your pain and your sorrow <laughs> and your rent the due. I can been. hear all of that. Um, <laughs> so on Doc, the key to Doc was that you you absolutely had to believe because it was a total fantasy around her, you needed to believe she was a real kid because mm -hmm. she was, again, it's that fantasy. You wanted to believe that she was a real kid and that everyone around her uh, would, would then get the realness. Because for me, it, no matter how fantastical my worlds are, I'm always trying to make you feel it real. Yeah. And um, so the rule on Doc was all kids were kids. All human kids were, were played by real kids. Mm -hmm. Then the toys were played by adult actors and they and often they were age less Ageless, right? right so they, they and, and some it was always an interesting thing because the, you you know it's that casting side thing what age are they and we'd be like mm. well in our relative world this is an older toy or a younger toy and every once in a while you would have a toy that you really knew like this is a baby toy but it will be yeah. an adult playing it right. but like Stuffy's one of our youngest toys, played by you know Robbie Riss. So like right. that that doesn't there's not he's not playing young. It's just a very young character. Jess's character, I always feel like he's a little older. He's just super stupid. Yeah, Jelly, right. like yeah. he's just not that bright. Lammy's pretty young. Yeah. Hallie's clearly older, but why? I don't know why. Yeah. it's not like they're playing them. They're not playing to age. Right. So anyway, that was that. I I believe that you can tell the difference, and I believe because I work in shows where. They have always had a fantastical side to it, to yeah. them. Mm -hmm. So either toys are talking, or, or your chef is a, um, is a bag of bones, is an yeah. actual skeleton, that you needed to ground the humans in something truly believable. Mm -hmm. And that's why I use kids, but... That makes total sense. Yeah. Totally, sure. and, yeah. and, but let's be honest, that's an incredibly hard thing, finding kids. Mm -hmm. So for both of those shows, there is one kid is leading one kid is leading a show with Patti Lapone in it, with Loretta mm -hmm. Devine in it, with um, Lauren you know, Graham, yeah. yeah, with Lauren. And so to find those kids who can who can do the work, I lo obviously love music. Who can sing the songs? Who can act? I you know these are real scripts with real emotional turns. Who can do the acting and can just be professional enough to do it. That's a hard thing, right, and right. I've been very lucky. Yeah, uh, I was lucky twice on Doc and. Um, Isabella Crivetti, who plays Vampirina, mm -hmm. is darling. Holy moly, she yeah. just blows me away every time. Mm -hmm. And that's her singing voice, and as she sings it, we could take her first take every time. Mm -hmm. that's so the cool. first time we put her up against Patti Lapone, uh, we, they were doing a duet, and I just, even as good as I knew she was, I was like, let's see how this goes. And you know, Patti comes in, it's just like oh, the whole room is like this sonic boom. And I was like, all right, now let's put these two voices together. So we go yeah. into the mix and we put them together. And it's like, oh my God, she totally mm -hmm. stands up. Yeah. 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 Well, it's what just... a great feeling for you to go from like one gigantic hit series yeah. mm -hmm. right into another series, right? Still right. Because and, 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 Vampirina's but, number one. Yeah. And just get to like experience like a whole new different thing, really. Yeah. 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 What, what's that feel? What does that feel like for you? Uh, I, again, I really just try to focus on like I'm. I love the character, and I knew I was very cognizant of like something like Doc doesn't happen very often, and right. now I'm gonna have to follow it up. And I know there are people who like the best thing that could ever happen to them is I have the kind of hit show, and let's say they're on Nickelodeon where they're gonna go for 19 seasons, and they're just like out of their mind excited, and I'm 
I have a little bit of professional ADD. I don't love to know everything about my job. So when I hit the point where I've mastered it, I start to be like, okay. Mm, what else uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so for me, um, you know, as, as much as I'm thrilled about the success of Doc, there was a moment where I was like, oh my God, I feel a little bit panicked because <laughs> I go to the same job every day. I do the same thing. Um, and so I, I had started to realize, like, all right, I have to follow this up, and how do you do that? And I really wasn't sure. I have plenty of other ideas, but I wasn't sure how I was going to do it. And somebody just showed me. It was a 30-second clip of the first test of the animation for Vampirina. They hadn't really cracked any of the yep, development. Yep. Mm -hmm. There was no voice. There was no anything. It was just her skipping across the screen. And I just went. You took a shower. I took a shower. Yeah. I, I know, I just shower. like, exactly. I just fell in love. I wrote the I first fell, 10 episodes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just fell in love. I just, I was like, I get it. I get mm -hmm. her. I see that I can live with her for a couple of years. I yeah. see what yeah. I can do. I see what she can be about. And the world, oh my God, I can't wait. Um, and so I was like, I was like I'm, I'm on board if you'll have yep. me. And I went, but I said, you know, I want to go back in and re-break this whole thing. Yep. Um, they had a world where it was like the vampire family and then just all humans. And I was like, oh, no, no, yeah. no, we want, yeah. you know. And I was like, we didn't need, we, there are no sidekicks. We don't have the comedy. So I brought in, um, we put in a ghost played by Mitchell Whitfield, who is, who, he had also done some work on Doc for us. Um, he played a character named Uy Gablui and sang the highest song I've ever made a male actor sing. <laughs> um, and he's just unbelievable he is unbelievable in the role of of Demi the ghost and then I wrote Gregoria the gargoyle for Wanda Sykes having absolutely no idea if she would say yes or not yeah. she, um, she, is the, she is that gargoyle she is she that is gargoyle. it and, and she that was a, that, that character was a real leap of faith because I was because I we didn't know until it all came together that it would work because mm -hmm. you know her voice is so intense very and specific, right? yeah. it's very specific and it was like it, it had to get and then we you know it just had to it had to all work so that you could feel the heart in it so mm -hmm. if the character had come out too stiff I think she would have felt harsh instead yeah. of actually right. there was a point where I was like Wanda don't take this the wrong way I really want your plush like I think this is going to be the toy that I want mm -hmm. is this but but no one everyone was a little like Ugh. and then the character came out I was like it was perfect it just worked yeah, yeah. um uh, uh James Vanderbeek um I sat next to it at a wedding mm. um so that was that's another thing I would just say for anyone watching this who's interested in VO like or just interested in this business. It's it, this is an interesting thing to say at this exact moment. Yeah, I don't work with assholes. There's there's you, Nor there should are just you. too many good people out there who mm -hmm. also have talent. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I'm not interested in it. I this just, is not a really good industry for assholes. <sighs> And yet, you know what I mean? Because there's so many cool people that are great. I agree, yeah, but then a lot yeah. of those people, there's a lot of putting up with... Well, sometimes they're put upon you, aren't they? Let's I talk mean, about some of the yeah. assholes that you've had a chance to work with. <laughs> By name, Chris, come on. Boy, I have to tell you, I've been so lucky. I have been so yeah. lucky. But I mean, the and fact even that the people coming in, in the... on one-offs are have been yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. The people you just would not have, like Ludacris, who's yeah. just the nicest man mm -hmm. on the face of the earth. <laughs> Michelle Obama getting to go record in the White House. Yeah. Um, uh, Patty Lapone, who's been like the nicest, most supportive person in the face of the earth. But James, I met, I sat next to him at a wedding, like a whole night where like we talked and we yeah. did a friend of ours was getting married and we, I met him and I met his wife and he was so just such a nice guy and the way he talked about his kids you could just feel this dad thing about him mm -hmm. um and when the role came up i was like sh I, I just was like james and everyone's like really are you sure does he sing and i was like james it's it and uh he's just oh his performance is incredible yeah, and he's so such good. a good guy and then you add in lauren graham mm -hmm. yeah and um yeah solid yeah um hey chris yes are in your opinion <laughs> <laughs> Are there any uh, special skills that you feel a voice actor really, really needs to embrace today yeah. to have success in animation? I mean, I can only speak for myself. I I care more about the acting than the voice. I tend to to n lean away from the character voice. Mm -hmm. Um, and more towards, did I hear that you heard the beats of the piece that we gave you to audition on? Um, that, that for me was the beauty of working with Maria Estrada. Yeah. Um, 
she's like one of the hardest working people I've ever met and her her breadth of knowledge is extraordinary and her 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 sense of what the craft is 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 extraordinary but one of my favorite things about her is that she still auditions for every role and listens and does not give a hoot who someone is what celebrity they are she will listen and put forward her 10 best. We, we not only work with some of the most amazing long-term voiceover actors, of course, on, on Doc, but we've also discovered a bunch of people that Jeffrey Bounds and Ari Rubens and all of those guys who've gone on to have like all this other success yeah. because she doesn't, she's not waiting her thing. And, and the biggest thing is that she's not going, let's just hire Mm-hmm. So and so for this role, which would be so much easier, and you'd still have a great show. Yeah, she sits and listens to something like fifty or sixty to a hundred auditions for every single role on that show, uh, and then curates the best ten yeah. to come to us. And so, I j- she's just actively searching for That's the really best cool. person. Well, for like the role. you, yeah. she enjoys yeah. the process. She enjoys the process of making something. That's great. exactly right. Yeah. What about um? Uh, and for both of us, acting. Yeah. We mm-hmm. care more about the acting, and I tend to like thing people who just do something a little weird, a little different. You'll get the six that are basically they're doing the same most obvious thing. Yeah. And then um, uh, I just remember how I mean. Uh, this does, this sounds like the but like hiring Tom Kenny because we were really taking a chance on that guy, um, yeah. but we were we had like a farmer character on Doc and everyone did like a hardcore farmer you know yeah. like this thing and he I it took me a long time to figure it out and finally I was like you were doing Hugh Hauser, <laughs> which is a very California reference yeah. but it was like so weird and not just that automatic thing and and that's the character you hear there was. Uh, we on on a dock again. We had a we had a character that was a stork, and uh, somebody came in. It took me forever to realize that they were basically doing like um, they were th- doing Groucho Marx doing the Velastic Pickle guy. Yeah. <laughs> so like, why did you think of that for that character? I don't know, but it isn't what I expected, and it cracks me up. Yeah. Like I'm That's so great. much more interested. That, in that. was going to be my next question: mm. is like, what are some standout things in auditions? And you just mentioned it was don't do your the typical thing. Try to do gonna... something different. Because guess what? If you do the typical thing, there are probably, especially if you're new, mm-hmm. there are five people. Because sometimes it does come down to like, all right, there these three. I like them, but oh my god, I, I love Kari Walker. Now I'll, I'll, I'm gonna, you know, I just can't wait to have her come in. I can't wait to have Gray come in. So like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hire the. Like, I will do that if it comes down to three things that sound the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're new and you can just bring a take that doesn't sound like anyone else's, uh, that's the way to kind of shine through. And again, I, I worked on a show where like, we, Maria and I both definitely would just be like, what? <laughs> like, that's awesome. Like, it's just, yeah. just yeah. when someone comes in from left field and pulls it off, uh, it always uh, perks my that's so cool. interest for sure. Wow. Yeah. I love that. And pay attention. Don't just do, like, you just hear people who are just like, this is the voice I want to show you I have. And then they're not really reading the text. And they're not hearing that I put in an emotional beat or whatever. And yep. they're not acting it. I, mm-hmm. yeah. If you can't act it, I don't. I'm not. Forget I'm about not, it. I'm not interested. Yeah. 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 So you don't like um, people who are nasty and you don't like people that can't act. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Chris, you're yeah, awesome. I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, I mean, what we do is such a gift. I, um, I, I, I had a moment where I had to think, has this aired yet? Um, but it has quite a while ago because now I have so much stuff going on. I, I'm yeah. not even aware. But you know, um, I, I went to Disney once, and I was like, I think I have a little bit of clout. And I, and I was having uh, a lunch with a very high person at Disney, and um, and I, I tend to, I'm very proactive, and I'm, I'm. I'm very proactive in everything. So when I go to lunch with someone, I will think like, what's the one thing I want? Like, what do I, what do I want to ask this person for if I can figure out a way to yeah. work it in? And, uh, and so at the end of the lunch, I, I said, you know, don't you think it's time for Doc to have a crossover? And, um, and he was like, well, you know, and like, there are so many great things out there that we could have. I mean, so I asked for Star Wars, knowing there was no way in hell we were getting a Star Wars mm-hmm. character. Um, and by the end of the lunch, we had come out that they had given us uh, Winnie the Pooh and um, to, to put on to Doc and, and it was such a weird thing because it, it was actually a crossover that like 
uh, we didn't have to change the rules of the world. It actually yeah, fits, if you yeah. think about it. Mm -hmm. Christopher Robin yeah. and Doc have the same totally. ability, and, and so it all actually fit in a really beautiful way. But I said, look, I only want to do it, I, I don't want to modernize it, I don't want to change it, I want to use not the original, original voices, but the voice, the more expensive. I yeah. want those voices. I don't want the second tier <laughs> yeah. voices. I don't want the cheap voices. Yeah. I want and we know ones. that like that happens <laughs> with those things. Like, and, and, and I want, uh, I want to use like the, some of the original animation style and we want to write one of the songs as if it's a Sherman Brothers song. And they were like, fine, you may do that. Like you yeah. can do, write him as Speaking he was. Speaking of the songs, yes. who, who, did you write the songs too? Or? No, Michelle uh, Lewis and Kay Hanley are our okay. writing team on, on Doc. Really great stuff, great man. Songs. So great, great songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah really yeah. great. But so I got to write an episode with Winnie the Pooh in it, and I, mm. I remember feeling very emotional as I was writing it, and and thinking like this is something from my childhood, and it means something to me. Yeah. And I was very reverent, and and the animators were very like. So we we get to the record, and this Jim Jim Cummings right. comes in, and I've met Jim before. He was doing other things, and um, he gets in the booth, and um, and he reads the first line that I wrote in the Winnie the Pooh voice, and I w got onto the talk back to to say something, and I I couldn't speak, and I Aww. I said I'm so sorry, I. I'm crying, and I my voice had just completely gone in my head, and he was so beautiful. He just he leaned forward and he said, "I can't tell you how often that happens," and I thought, you know, that is such a gift to get to mm -hmm. touch yeah. kids in that place that, as an adult, it's still gooey. And I remember going home and thinking, like, again, I don't like to have the hubris to think, but like, did I? I may have created a character that someday. Someone's going to have felt been touched in that same place, mm -hmm. yeah. and I try to be really aware of that. That if you do it right, you're you're hitting kids in a moment where they're just developing who they are, and this these characters can be friends of of them for their lifetime. Yes. And yes. I like I try to be really aware of that. And uh, yeah, that was incredible. Say you have a friend who's a writer producer who comes to you and says, Chris. What words of wisdom do you have for me? I want to do this business. I want to yeah. move forward. What should I do, not do? First of all, you have to do the work. Um, and I, and I, I, I feel like we've lost a little bit the sense of the craft of it. And, you know, we've become a society that just everybody wants instant success. Fix, yeah. You know, I didn't, um, I probably waited longer than I needed to, although it all worked out fine. But I believed in being a workaday writer. I believed in... Um, in spending, uh, paying my dues and spending my time uh, lower down in a writing staff and really learning and paying attention to every little, everything that a story editor changed. I would go back and study the script I ended in and the script, you know, I, I just wanted to learn. Um, uh, so do the work. Um, if you are lucky enough to be inside the door at all, but you want to be doing something else, um, I really believe in you have to declare for yourself mm -hmm. and declare to other people where you want to go. I'm a um, I'm not a sports person, but I but I but I love more from like old movies than from actual sports. I I love that idea of the baseball player who points where the ball is going to mm -hmm. go, mm -hmm. and I really believe in that. And nobody else is looking out for your dreams, so you have to yeah. go to someone and say, just so you know, and and I can be very cheap about it. I've, I've been known to do things like that. Just so you know, um, you're never going to hire another executive producer on this show, and eventually you're going to realize that I'm the showrunner of it. Well, we're nowhere now. No, I know that. I'm not. Just, this is not now. I'm just yeah. letting you know that in the future, and you know, um, and those things tend to manifest themselves. Yeah. Um, and again, if you have your foot in the door, uh, don't ask someone for a job, but ask them for advice. It's very hard to turn down advice. If you're a PA someone where, and you, you want to, like, just go say to someone, like, can I sit in on a writer's meeting. I won't speak. Like, don't speak. Really don't. Like, yeah, go yeah. sit. Yeah, You'd yeah. be amazed at the people who then show up and like are like, blah, blah, blah. and it's like, no. But they will note that you asked. They'll note your initiative. They'll note what you're interested in. Yeah. And in the meantime, you're also learning, don't just focus on your one thing. Be the person when they, mm -hmm. when someone hands you the ball, back in sports matter for, um, that you really know how to run with it. Yeah. Yeah. That was a lot of advice back then. No, but it's that great. is really good advice. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good advice. Well, if you can, if you can see it, yeah. you can have it. You, know? and you have to see it for yourself, but you also, like, you got to say it to other people because they yeah. don't know where you think you're going to go. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and again, it's and, and, and saying it without asking for the job, it's just like, again, if you're someone's assistant, 
make sure at some point you said to them, just so you know, this is what I want to do. Yeah. And anything you can do to help prepare me for it versus asking yeah. for the job, prepare me for it. Anything you can let me, uh, any advice you have, uh, but I want you to know where I want to go. Yeah. And then you just put the put in their head a different version of yeah. you. Well, you know, yeah. Chris, yeah. Stacy <laughs> will someday work in one of your shows. There you go. You Done. don't know that right now, exactly. but I'm just telling you. Okay. Yeah. I agree. Um, yes. I'm never going to do that because I don't want to. But uh, no, I have to say, so you're celebrating now 20 years, yeah, you said earlier, right? Yeah, 20 years yeah, of, really... of writing and, and producing. Kids TV, yeah. I started at Sesame Street uh, in two, two, 2000, uh, no, sorry. 1996. 1996. Wow. 2096. Yeah, exactly. I really um, had to stop myself there and be like, I no, know. that doesn't. That's wrong. But I mean, what a, what a great, math. what a great what accomplishment, math. man! Just everything yeah. that you've done, you know, from the get go and all the amazing things that you've done to where yeah. you are today, and probably. This is just like the tip of the iceberg, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's probably like, so. like like just gazillions of awesome times ahead. Yeah. I don't so, feel ready to hang it up yet. And, yeah. And I do feel like show, a show like Doc and it's feeling like maybe Vamp will be a similar thing. Like they, they do open doors for you. And, for sure. And even you could see like we had the best cast we could ever have wanted on Doc, but you just saw how, how many doors we could open on Vamp immediately because of what. So, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm. Raring to go. Yeah. So good. Well, Stacy and I are very proud and I know. and and, and it's honored wonderful. to be able to sit here with oh, you. Yeah. And, very yeah. excited yeah. to be here. Um, Absolutely. When you think about some lessons that you've learned in your life, are there any that stick out to you that have really helped you stay focused and stay in your in your lane professionally? Um, you know. I think it's the Judy Garland quote that's, that's uh, you know, I, I would always be a second-rate version of someone else, so right. I might as well be myself. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm not, I, I, I'm not your, I mean, no one is, but uh, especially in the 80s and the 90s, um, um, I, I didn't quite fit into the mainstream, and I always look back and think, like, were there times where, uh, where, where that hurt me or helped me? And ultimately, I think... Um, I had no choice but to be really good at what I did because I was never going to be the person who moved up just because I was the comfortable, easy, mm -hmm. like the person who hung out with everyone outside. Yeah. So I, I, I think all of that and sort of embracing whatever it is that's, that's different and unique about you is the way to go. Um, I'm also a big believer in like you have way more time than you think you do. Uh, I always look back before I had a kid, before I had, you know, my own shows, and I always thought I just didn't have time. Like I, you're just like, oh my god, I just have no so time. Short. <laughs> totally, and just and just like my, it, literally my days just seem to always expand. I'd be like, oh, I tried to get, and it's like the more stuff I get to do, the more I'm able to do. But if you could apply that to. The moments where, like, you don't have a kid and you don't have a, uh, you you know, you're just playing for an apartment. Like, that's when you should be writing your gold or creating your gold. And um, and we do live in a bi a world now with all of the technology. Like, go make your thing. Totally. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for anyone's permission. Right. Uh, you, you don't need to you, do that anymore. No, I no mean, you really don't. No. There are so many ways to uh, to make your. Don't don't just be sitting and you know applying for jobs. Yeah. Go make something. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because it's also waiting for other people to decide. That's right. What to your give you permission. To look like. That's it's exactly like, right. And I think you just that's have to. Giving away all your power. I mean, you should you should be. That's the exactly. Seat of your that's life. exactly right. Figure yeah. out a way to 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 kind of to come at it in a different way. Because there are so many people who want to work in this business. Yeah. Nobody has a right to work in this business. Like you yeah, have to you have, have to earn X it, amount of talent. You have to be a good person, you have to work your ass off, you have to get a little lucky, you have to keep coming back, like no one idea. If you're a person who has one great idea and you just <laughs> cannot believe that that didn't sell, and you're like, well, I give up. Well, you didn't belong here yeah. in the first place. True. Is your work ethic, was that something you've always had? Was that something that you were, was ingrained in you? Or I mean, because you clearly are. A work, I mean, a I'm, a, I'm an overachiever, but I also, I've, Failed out of college. I failed a lot in high school. I'm either, if I love something, I do it to the nth degree, and if I, don't if like I don't, it, I have like I'm forget. not. I'm not that person. Yeah. I'm not right. doing it for the sake of like I, I, I like it's right for me to. No, I, I, fa I failed. 
uh, my first semester of college, I I was out at Christmas. So when everyone mm. came home at Christmas, that first semester of college, I was a like, lot of money yeah, back, Chris. no, no, I went back. I char- I my I took me <laughs> six years to get through college. My poor parents, um, uh, but like I was already gone. Like everyone came home, and everyone was like, oh my god, my college is this, and I was like, and I was like, I'm already gone. <laughs> like, I, I had to pack my bags and leave. Like, I had already failed out. Like oh, it was yeah. crazy, uh, but that worked out. Yeah, yeah I would say. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. What are you most passionate about these days? Oh, I mean, we have to do better and more. Like, I don't, do I even have to define? Like, we just, uh, we, we have to fix our country. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and I, we have and to fix I, our world. Yeah, mm-hmm. we have to fix our world. Um, and there are so many things. But I, I think at the end of the day, I'm, I'm very obsessed with the word and the meaning behind the word of civics. Um, I really believe that we have, that even when our country was headed in the wrong direction, I used to believe uh, that you could walk into any cafe, any in the wor- anywhere in the world, not anywhere in the world, anywhere in the States, and if you could just talk to people one-on-one, that we all felt like Americans and that there, mm-hmm. was, a, there was a beauty to yeah. what that thing was mm-hmm. and that we... Um, and, and we have obviously, there's been a rupture. Uh, we have lost our sense of government. We've lost the sense, I mean, I, I, again, I'm, I'm a, I, my kid, my poor kid uh, has, has, since he's two years old, has to watch the State of the Union. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a politics nut, and, and it's very upsetting that I can't really watch anymore. But I, it was that, that shift, uh, I mean, honestly, it was that first time someone yelled out in the State of the Union, you're a liar, and I thought, oh, God, we've forgotten that the, the, the president is the president of everyone, no matter what. Like, I am that person. I believe in those yeah. things. And we've just forgotten the civility um, the civility that is the basis basis of of our sense of what it is to be American yeah. civics. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. I have to agree with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we're not going to go too deep into that. No, the pendulum um, has to swing. You know, yeah. swing. We're not, we can't we can't stay here yeah. forever. Yeah, but that's I am f- always writing about communities. It is my yes. version yeah. of like, it. We have to take. We have to feel like one community. Yeah. And, yeah. And 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 that doesn't mean not arguing our sides. We are a big country. We're gonna have different things. But we've forgotten that after you, after the argument, y'all come back to the table exactly and sit down and have a meal. And yeah. we're not having the meal anymore. Yeah. Yeah. No, Every we're day, not responsible yeah. only for ourselves. No. Every day of my know? life, I try to inspire people to be good to each other. Yeah. To help each other mm-hmm. yeah. and to just put love out, yeah, because we so need it. Yes. Hey, can we ask Chris? Uh, can you do that? Chuck? One last, uh, yes. put you on the this spot is a question. This question. I'm so Chris? excited. <clears throat> She's like, I'm so excited. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, can I take the dare? No. You can. Yeah. yeah, and read it as your favorite character. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't like to choose my children. I'm a smart girl. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, where would you choose to live if you had to leave this country? Ireland. I am an Irish citizen and a U.S. citizen. It's where I work, and they speak the language. <laughs> what do you love about <laughs> Ireland? Um, it's such a beautiful oh, language. Oh, it's a beautiful, yeah, beautiful language, beautiful country. You know what? It is, um, it is a country of strivers. And you ask about my, my, my work ethic, because I, I was never the typical, like, a type A student, yeah. obviously. Mm-hmm. But... Um, I, I moved to Seattle, uh, what, uh, someone else, someone in the audience can say, uh, the year, I was there the year Kurt, Kurt Cobain died, and I'm only laughing because on the day he died, I was walking to work, um, and a social worker stopped me and said, are you okay? We want you to know that we're here, and I, and I just said the moment, I was like, Oh, I'm wearing flat. Oh no, I'm I'm gay. I'm not. I, it's I'm not a, a grunge. Like I'm not gonna kill myself over. Uh, yeah. I mean, I loved Kurt right. Cobain and I right. loved his music, but like, no, that's this is a different flannel. It's okay. Like because they were just checking in with right. everyone that you were okay. Um, wow. But being in Seattle during the period of grunge was when mm-hmm. I realized that I had ambition, mm-hmm. and that, that was okay. And like I that I'm a stri- So the Irish are strivers. They just yeah. like they're gonna get shit done. They're gonna do it with humor and then you're going to go out and you're going to and again the 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 beauty of a pub to me is about at the end of the day you all go out and have that meal for them it might be a liquid meal mm. um which <laughs> I'm perfectly happy to, to enjoy meal. but they really believe in the humanity of like 
this business should be, a, we're literally tapping into humanism and mm-hmm. it should be a human business. And I think sometimes we forget and we only deal with each other in offices. And what yeah. I love about the Irish, um, you know, I, I, tr- I spend two to three months there a year. And part of it is like, we spend all that money because we know we have to be together. And yeah. that like when, sometimes when we have fights, we need to go out after, you know, afterwards. And, and play together. Yeah, yeah. And just like, and just shoot the shit together. Like yeah. that stuff is important. So I love them for that. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I got civic pride. I want to stay in America. I, I believe in this country um, as hard as that is right now. Mm-hmm. But I do have another passport. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I know that you are making <laughs> this place a better place to live one <laughs> show at a time. We don't want to let you go. We don't want to let you go. Thank you so much for, oh for being on our show. Thank you, Chris. So, so cool. Uh, Chris Nee, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and we're going to be back next week with uh, another show. I'm Chris Nee, and I just got buzzed with Chuck and Stacy. And uh, I believe we got to come together in this world. Well, that's all we have with part two. Chris Nee, uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the show. I know I have. She is just fantastic. So darling. I love her. Um, hey, leave us any questions or thoughts in the comments below, and we'll see you guys next week. We will, and keep up with us and Chris on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We love you guys. Thanks for watching, and just remember, you, you always, always have, have time, time for, for a little buzz. buzz. Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo That Rock. Rock. The voice of a demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit DemosThatRock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.